Hello everyone, welcome back. I have a bit of a problem today. I have a lot of servers, and it's kind of a pain to manage them because none of them have IPMI. Well, one of them does. So today, I'm going to solve that problem of remote access to my servers using a PyKVM. And you've probably heard about the PyKVM, but I'm going to do it a little bit differently. Instead of having a PyKVM for every server, because Raspberry Pis cost a lot of money, um, they're kind of hard to find, I'm going to use one Raspberry Pi KVM along with an 8-port rack mount HDMI switch so I can control eight computers from up here in my room. And uh, yeah, let's get going. So to build a Pi KVM, obviously we need a Raspberry Pi. And the Raspberry Pi on its own will do USB device simulation, keyboards, mice, thumb drives, whatever, but only over its USB-C port. So I need a solution to power it as well. I'm gonna use a PoE hat on top. However, you can also get hats such as the Pi KVM hat, some other hats that are also made um, or you can get a splitter that connects USB power and data separately. And to capture video from the target device, they also make hats for this too, but I'm going to use a USB video device. These are really cheap, really easy to get. Um, they're apparently not the fastest, latency is not great, but uh, I'm managing servers here, it's probably fine. Software install is pretty easy too, micro SD card. I'm going to use Raspberry Pi Imager. I'm going to come over here and download the latest version. And let's go. Now we wait. So I've got the SD card in here. We're going to plug it in. Then we wait for it to boot up and see if we can find the IP address. So once we've found the IP address from our router, we can go there, web browser, cell sign certificate error, yeah, the usual. Default username and password is admin admin. There we go. It's got Dell Wise 3040 Thin Client. I got plenty of videos on this. It's a real low cost solution, USB to USB-C. HDMI to DisplayPort cable. So I'm going to boot up the thin client and let's uh, hop into something. There we go. So the Pi KVM seems to be working out pretty well right now, at least for servers and stuff like that. It's obviously not going to do gaming, whatever, but I can get into the BIOS, I can boot stuff, I'm happy with that. Next step is because these things are so impossible to buy right now, both the Pi KVM and the Raspberry Pi itself, um, I'm going to see if I can hook a rack mount KVM switch up to it so I can share it across more than one computer. And so I asked my friends at TestMart if they could send over a KVM and they sent over an eight port rack mount KVM and uh, let's get that thing hooked up. Let's see what we got in here. Cables. So here we go, KVM switch. In the back, looks like we've got PC1 through PC8, USB 2, HDMI, keyboard mouse port, USB 2 port. Apparently it can pass through things like flash drives and stuff at USB 2 speeds, which is fine for me. I can just leave a Ventoy drive plugged in here, re-ISO all of my uh, stuff as it comes. One output. In the front we have LAN. So these cables are sort of, uh, these are a sort of twin cable. Got an HDMI and a USB on each end. These are for our devices. They included four of them in the box. It's an eight port switch, so you might need to get some of your own. So yeah, let's get this thing installed in the rack.
So I got the Testmart 8 port rack mount KVM connected. I got the Pi KVM hooked up to it. You can see on the screen here, I'm logged into one of my servers. Got a bunch of D-message logs. Seems to be working out pretty well. Sherlock is happy with it, and that's what matters because he's the king. But it's not quite perfect because I can look at this monitor, which is port one, but I can't change it. And that's why we need to configure the IP. So coming over to the Pi KVM docs, they have a whole page on this. So if we look here, you can see these are their instructions. Comes with some Windows software that you could use if you wanted. Um, I'm not really into, I mean, I'm running Windows, I could just use it, but uh, there's an easier way. So the default IP address of the KVM switch is 192.168.1.10. And uh, if that's your network subnet, then great, you just type that in. If that's not your network subnet, then we need to add an IP address on the Pi that is in that network subnet. So I'm gonna open the terminal here. We're gonna sudo our way to be a uh, admin. So su dash, that takes us to root. The default password is also root. Now we're root. So we're gonna type rw to mount read write. That way we can edit configs and we'll edit networking. So PyKVM is based on Arch and uses systemd networking. So Etsy systemd network, eth0.network. I spell it right, there we go. Default config uses DHCP. In my case, I am going to leave it DHCP because I'm happy with that. Um, I'm gonna use the IPv6 address, which is effectively static. And I'm just gonna add an address on the same subnet as the Testmark KVM. So a 31 subnet is special. It's used in IPv4 for point-to-point -point links. So in this case, I need the one bit different pair. So if the test smart is not 10, I need to be at 11. There's also instructions on the site for config changes to PyKVM to tell it about the test smart. And I'm just gonna copy and paste those right in. So the defaults only have four servers. You'd obviously expand this if you have eight, 16, whatever, how many ports you have in the KVM. And when we're all done, I'm just gonna reboot so that all our settings take effect. You could just reboot the individual services if you wanted. And it'll come back up and we should be able to change what port we're on in the KVM. Press enter to reconnect. You wanna press enter, buddy? No. We're back up again, my helper left me. So let's see what goes on. There we go. Yeah, it looks like it works. So that took me to Iridium, I think. So it seems to be working. I can switch between my servers from my Pi KVM remotely, and I am pretty happy. So a couple of things I noticed while testing this, um, my USB HDMI device did stop working a few times and unplugging it and plugging it back in seemed to help. I don't know if that's the device or not. It happened with and without the Testmark KVM, so that wasn't a uh, contributing factor. Um, one of my devices, my OpenSense box, doesn't output an HDMI unless that HDMI port is connected to something when it boots up. This is a relatively common occurrence. So um, in my case, I don't want to reboot it because it's important, but I rebooted some of my other devices and they all found the Testmark KVM and that found the Pi KVM and they worked fine. So that's something to be aware of. Um, if the device is more than one HDMI port or more than one display port, it might not output anything unless it had something connected to that when it went through the BIOS. Um, yeah, I got a link down below to the Testmark KVM if you're interested. Um, thanks for coming along. I'm a bit sick today, so sorry I'm uh, sounding kind of weird, but uh, I'm probably better by the time the video comes out, so yeah. Um, Discord link down below if you want to chat with me, and I will see you guys on the next adventure.